And now Matt's going to demonstrate the marker tree process. Well, typically my, my um, marker tree is being used on larger pieces of furniture. But um, I also do some smaller pieces that are nice ways to display some marquetry, um, but they're also functional. This is used as a letter holder or a napkin holder. And so here's a couple of examples, uh, a little bamboo design that I do. And you can see that, that these pieces are, they're, they're like three-eighths of an inch thick, but the actual marquetry work is done when this piece of wood is in veneer form. Um, so I have a few samples here so you can see uh, that the veneers are about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And these are veneers that I cut myself on the bandsaw. It's called resawing, where I take a board, run it through the bandsaw, and slice off uh, these. Which um, well, one of my favorite woods for the background of marquetry is uh, the native big leaf maple, which is what this is has nice colors, um, especially pieces that have a little bit of pattern or a little bit of uh, mineral streaking color to them, or in some cases spalting, which is where a fungus has gotten in there and added a little color. It's got a little bit of ripple here and a little bit of pink color and, and various little shades of, of lighter colors. forms a good background. The design that I'd like to work with is this bamboo stalk with a couple of leaves, very simple design. So I start with the drawing, and then so the next step is to transfer the drawing onto the workpiece. So I'll position the six inch square where I want the design to be and give myself an outline. And you can see that I'm avoiding these uh, little areas of imperfection, little voids here that we don't want to use. All right, so I'll start by making sure I have a registration mark so that when I want to come back later and trace in the leaves, I'll be able to line the design up. And so there, I think you can see that we've got the, the outline of the bamboo stalk in place. So now for the actual woods that I'm going to use for inlay, I've got this selection of woods. Uh, this is a, a type of ebony. Um, which I've sliced into veneers and I'll use one of those for the stock. For the, the nodes in between I like to use something a little bit lighter so I've got this uh, sycamore which has this nice mottled appearance and I'll use that for the, the nodes in between. Base so the piece where the inlay is coming from actually gets taped to the back so we turn this piece over, we use some masking tape, tape it in place. And then I need an entry hole, which is where the uh, scroll saw blade will pass through. So I'll give myself an entry hole here. And I'm putting the entry hole in a place where I know I'm going to come back later and inlay this piece of ebony so that that hole will disappear. So now we'll... Uh, feed the scroll saw blade through this hole in the back. And now you can notice that the, the table of the scroll saw is tilted at an angle. And uh, this angle is very important because as I'm cutting the piece in this direction, I'll be moving the, uh, the whole wood assembly in this direction, um, the, the piece underneath, the inlay piece, is going to have beveled edges. And so that the piece underneath will be slightly larger than the piece I'm cutting out of the top piece of wood. And if I've got the angle just right, that piece will fit in snugly and there won't be any gaps. That's what I'm shooting for is no gaps. So when I've cut that piece, I can uh, toss the waste and save the inlay piece. Okay, so now I have my two inlay pieces so I can remove the tape. And so I have a little bit of white glue that I'll use to spread on the edges. And before I do the glue, I just want to show you that this piece fits in from the back and so it's snug with no gaps on the surface. It doesn't fit in from this side because remember, 
both the cut and the inlay piece have eight degree bevels on their edges. So they only fit from the, the back and they don't fall through and they have a nice snug fit with no gaps. So I can fit, I can spread a little bit of glue on the edges like so, just enough to hold it in place. I can feel that this this veneer is slightly thicker than the, the veneer I'm inlaying into, so it's a little bit proud. So I have a, a block plane here, and I'll just level it off so that it's flush on top. A little proud in the back, too. I'll often make the inlay veneers, veneers just slightly thicker so that if there's any discrepancy in... You know, if the angle isn't just perfect, um, there's enough extra to make sure that I get a nice tight fit. So now we've got these two little node places uh, in place. So the next, the next piece will be this the dark stock, and that's what I want to use this ebony for. Wood, wood has graphics. The grain um, uh, gives you opportunities to accentuate your design if you pay attention to it. With this design, I'm, I'm kind of considering that light is coming from this angle, so that uh, you would think that this side might be more in shadow and this side might be more in light. And so maybe if I can use this lighter band as this edge of the bamboo stalk and then some of these darker parts over here, it will help uh, give that illusion of there being some sunlight and there being some depth to the piece. So we'll set that piece aside and, and I lined it up just nicely so we've got some of this lighter lighter part of the ebony on the, right on the edge and then darker on the, the other side. So now we've got our, our bamboo stalk all in place. And so we need to move on to the leaves. And one thing I find is useful in, in trying to make these images come alive is to try and convey a sense of, of movement. Um, so in this case, thinking about uh, a little bit of wind blowing in this direction, it's sort of flipping up this leaf a little bit, you know, so that things are interacting with, with nature and there's a little bit of movement going on. So I'm going to use uh, this yellow heart for a couple of these leaves and then use the darker acacia for a couple of the others. And I've got some overlap areas here. And I always try and create some overlap because it helps uh, with the illusion of three-dimensionality. It's also nice to create little shadow effects, and we can do that by using hot sand and leaf. What I do, when I'm going to do sand shading, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the, the piece in place without glue and I'll give myself some pencil marks where I want there to be shadow. Take the piece out and I've got this uh, pot of hot sand here and this is just beach sand from the local beach and uh, what I do is I dip the piece in and we're trying to, to create a little bit of a shadow. We don't want to combust the piece. We don't want it to go up in flames. Um, but it's a little tricky procedure because um, when the piece is all done and glued up, we're going to sand it to uh, polish it up and level it. And in the process, we'll lose a little bit of the shadow. So I need to go a little further than I want the shadow to ultimately be, but you can see I'm creating a darker area at the base of that leaf. And it's also starting to smoke a little, so you can tell that it's getting quite hot. So what I usually like to do is take a little bit of water and a paper towel and just cool that piece off to stop the, uh, the burning process and also make it a little easier to handle. But there I've got my shadow. Now I can go ahead and glue that in place. This is called hot sand shading. It's, a, it's an old technique. Marquetry is an, is an ancient technique and it was developed in Europe during the Renaissance. 
Um, and they used this technique during that time as well. And there we have our leaf. And you can see when I overlap the next leaf, you'll have a little bit of a shadow there, which helps create depth. So at this point, we can jump. Now we have our finished piece, and we want to, or I want to, glue it up to this piece of 3 8 inch plywood core. And when you're working with veneer, anytime you do one thing to one side of, of the plywood, you want to do the same thing to the other. So I have a piece of uh, a scrap of cherry veneer which I'm going to put on the other side. So it's basically a sandwich. Veneer on one side, plywood in the middle, veneer on the other side. And we need a press in order to, to put consistent pressure over the entire thing while the glue is drying. With something this small, it's very simple just to take some scraps of plywood, and I, I like to use a couple layers because it helps uh, distribute the pressure. And so I've got a couple layers of plywood. I've got a layer of, of thick cardboard, which helps distribute any irreg irregularities in the surface, make sure every part of the work it has pressure on it. So a piece of cardboard, a couple pieces of newspaper so that if any glue squeezes through the woodwork, you're not going to ruin the piece of cardboard. You can reuse that. So a couple of pieces of paper. And then same thing on the other side. When you're gluing veneer, you never apply the glue to the veneer itself because uh, the glue contains moisture, obviously. So if you put moisture on one side, this, this part of the wood's going to start to expand while the other side doesn't. And pretty soon you'll have something like this, which is very hard to work with. So glue only goes on the plywood. And uh, I like to use this roller to distribute the glue. So spread on some glue. We'll roll it around. And with this roller, you don't need to press, because if you press, you're just making puddles. But very light pressure, almost just the weight of the roller itself. And then you take that and flip it. Place it down on your veneer and do the same on the other side. And we'll just make sure that this piece is centered on the plywood. And to keep things from moving around when I put it all in the press, I use a few pieces of blue tape. I use blue tape and not white tape because white tape, once it goes through the press, very difficult to remove. That's all ready to go. So we take our one half of the veneer press, put this in place, take the other half, flip it over, and we've got our sandwich. And now I'm just using half a dozen of these shop clamps to apply pressure. So there, and then I generally would give a piece like that overnight to, uh, to set up. So that's the veneer press. So we've got a piece in the press. It needs to stay in the press for several hours. I've gone ahead and uh, pressed a piece ahead of time so that you can see what the finished work looks like. So, so here's a piece that we've, we've done the same sandwiched two pieces of veneer over a plywood core. Uh, I've pressed it, uh, let it sit overnight, taken it out, and I've uh, used a random orbit sander to clean up the surface. And uh, let's just put a finish on there, because the, the first application of finish always brings out the, the colors of the wood. And in this case, I'm going to use a shellac finish. And, uh, You can get an idea of what the, the finished piece is going to look like. 